Hello. Hello. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, tell me about your mallet. Well, this is a uh, original, original, um, classic cream cover mallet. It has TW on it. It's mm. my father's mallet. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's neat. Okay. And so it's an original, uh, yeah. a cream mallet. Um, you don't have any modifications. No, no. Okay. Do you use no. tape or what do you do? Yeah, I use tape. I use a uh, foam padding and then I put some just cloth tape over that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So can you just say who you are and where you're from? I'm uh, Jacob Weissman. I'm from Houston, Texas. Okay. And what do you do? What do you do for a living or what do you do? I'm a student right now, but I will be a therapist. Okay. And so, I, okay, so you're, you're studying to become a therapist. Yes, yes. You want to say a little bit about that? Um, sure. Um, well, uh, I really have always enjoyed psychology. That's what I got my undergraduate degree in. And the human mind fascinates me very much. Um, and I think I also have a pretty good knack for talking with people, building relationships. So it was kind of just a natural thing for me. So I started looking at graduate programs. Right. And so what graduate program are you in? I'm uh, in the clinical mental health counseling program at HBU. That's Houston Baptist University. Okay. Cool. All right. So tell me, uh, Jacob, how did you discover air hockey? <laughs> well, I was born into it. Um, because my father, I don't know if you know him. Uh, <laughs> you can refer to me as as, uh, as me. <laughs> as, uh, Tim Weissman yeah, that's me. is, in my opinion, the best air hockey player of all time. Uh, high praise. Uh, Ten-time world champion. Um, but he was out of the sport. You, okay, you were out of the sport. Uh, kind of when I was. Well, I guess by the time I was seven, eight, you're out of the sport, mm -hmm. and then. Around the time I was 14, 15, you got back into it, started taking me to uh, the place we used to have weeklies back then, SRO yeah. in Houston. Right. And uh, I just fell in love with it. Uh, you never really pushed it on me. Right. I just found it on my own and just became obsessed with it in high school. Right. What are your, what, I mean, are there any memories you have from when you first sort of discovered it as something you were really obsessed with? Any memories? from that time stick hmm. with you? I remember one thing that always sticks out to me is I remember, I don't really have specific memories, but I remember the feeling of the drive home after the weeklies. I just enjoyed it a lot. It was kind of cool, you know, you'd be out late on Friday nights, mm -hmm. driving back with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just remember enjoying that. It felt like every Friday night going into this complete different world, right. you know. You don't have any of the crazy high school stuff. Sure. You know, you just focus on air hockey and just be in that. Um, yeah. Well, and, and a number of people have talked about um, similar things about air hockey that uh, everything else falls away. Yeah. You know? And that kind of makes me think of that. So, okay. So, if you had to distill it down. What does air hockey mean to you? What does air hockey mean to me? I mean, I guess air hockey means family. To okay. Me. Mm -hmm. it's what my, if I had to say one word, it would be mm -hmm. family. Family. Um, because, you know, it's a family sport yeah. for the Weissmans. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it's always been about something. Something that I'm doing with my family and the people close to me. Sure. Um, and really, when I uh, I ran, uh, I started the uni the UH Air Hockey Club, right. the University of Houston Air Hockey right. Club, and that's really what that was about for me is building friendships. Sure. And um, yeah, and so it, it, I feel like that's always been a major thing for me in air hockey is the relationships. The relationships. Yeah. The community. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Is air hockey um, your first passion pursuit, or one of many, or? No, it, I'd say my first passion pursuit was Taekwondo when I was uh, in 
in elementary school and then middle school. Um, and I also got very into this uh, card game called Magic the Gathering when okay. I was about a senior in high school. Right. But air hockey is definitely the most significant of all of those passions. Okay. What sets it apart, do you think? I think the competitive aspect and the physical aspect merging together. Okay. Uh, because, you know, Taekwondo was physical. Right. But it wasn't really physical, really, in that one on one competition way. Right, right. And I didn't, I wasn't really interested in sparring. I don't sure. like being kicked in the head. <laughs> um, yeah. And then magic is very strategic, but it doesn't have the physical element. Mm. That's something you just mm. do on the weekend sitting on your computer or something. Okay, okay. Um, so I guess air hockey feels much more engaging to me than anything else I've done. So it, it, it's, you've got this physical yeah. aspect tied in with the competitive yeah. aspect. So it's a sport, right? Yes, I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's so, it, you know, there weren't other sports that you actively played. So in some ways yeah. it's like- It was my first sport, right. for sure. My only sport, yeah. really, that I've ever okay. played. Okay, yeah. Huh. So do, do you feel like air hockey has changed you? For sure. For sure. Air hockey's made me much more confident as a person. Okay. Um, I think I can be a little, I'm a little socially anxious. Okay. And air hockey really helped me to come into my own and feel comfortable with sort of exerting myself in a social domain, right. you know, mm -hmm. get comfortable. It was kind of natural. You get comfortable as you win, have a tight game. It's natural to kind of give a grunt or kind of right. some sort of like exertion. Mm -hmm. And that helped me to become much more comfortable just in wider life, mm. putting myself out into the world more. Mm -hmm. can, you, I mean, can you think of any examples that kind of come to mind where you, you felt like, you know what, I yeah. do this in air hockey, I can now transfer it here. Right, right. Hmm. Well, let me think here. Hard for me to think of a specific example, okay. but yeah. I do remember after I won uh, the world championship in 2017. Yeah. And I um, had uh, I was in a fraternity in college, and we we had these like weekly meetings, and I always sure. feel kind of awkward, not really wanting to engage. Right. Sure. But that the meeting after the tournament that I went to, I remember just feeling like I can say anything. <laughs> you know, I don't I yeah. don't have to worry about any of it. So, is it is that because previous to it, there's this concern that you've got to live up to some standard yes. or yeah. prove that you have worth in some way in yeah. the social I setting? Think, yeah, that's exactly. But it. now you have you, you got you've got the stamp of approval from the yeah. world, right? Yeah. You know, you're 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 number one, and yeah. you've accomplished that. And so, yeah, I don't have to prove it now. Right. I think that's exactly it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. What do you love most about air hockey? I love getting into a flow state. Okay. That's what I love the most. Okay. The uh, flow state is uh, this is what a lot of athletes say they get into. It's when, right. um, I forget what all the elements are, but it's basically the int this extreme intensity. It feels like time stops. You're just completely enraptured and focused on this one thing. Right. I um, mean, I love that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And w what is it about that experience that you seek? It's, I think we go through life trying to search for things, trying to find a meaning. And that's just a state that just feels inherently meaningful. There's nothing that you need to go be doing or to figure out. You don't have to think about school the next day or work or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. in this moment, it feels like the universe is perfect. Everything is complete. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's why I love that feeling. Mm. And have you been able to find that in other places than air hockey? Or has air hockey been the singular place for that? I mean, I've, I think air hockey really probably is the same thing you're place. I mean, I'll feel something kind of like that sometimes. I have like an intimate moment with family sure, or sure, friends, sure. something like that. Right. But really air hockey is definitely, the, the, the degree is so much higher. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. And I wonder, do you have a sense about 
what I mean obviously air hockey is it's a it's a, a competitive intense experience but is it just that that allows us to get to that flow state or is there something unique to air hockey itself I think there's something I think air hockey facilitates it a lot because of the way we play the game, you know, hold, the mallet feels like an extension of your hand. Okay. Um, and I mean, evolutionarily, you know, especially as men, we, you know, kind of evolved to hunt okay. things, right? And so that's why, you know, people just love playing catch. Okay. You know, and air hockey kind of has that element, if you think about it, mm -hmm. where you're mm -hmm. trying to, you know, catch the pot or mm -hmm. score mm -hmm. it, you mm -hmm. know, throw something. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just... And obviously, it's so intense because of sure. the speed of the puck and the speed of the game. While right. it also has this tactical element, so I think air hockey's perfectly made for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, almost a, a rhythmic aspect yes. to it at times. Yeah. It, it kind of that patterned. Yes. Um, yeah. It's almost mesmerizing. Yes. Yeah. And there's, I think, the sound is also a big part of it. There's mm -hmm. a certain just the sound of scoring. You know, it's a great sound. It is. So I think it's all of that together. Are there? A, is there a specific shot that sounds right and while feels under. right while undergoing? Right under. yes. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm asking? Yeah. Okay. What What is it about the sound? It just the way it goes into the goal. The sound it makes is just such a. I don't even know. Like the way it it hits it so forcefully and rings mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. much. I think it's because you have the sound of the rail followed immediately by the sound of the goal. Okay. Um, something about like that continuity, I just like it mm. a lot. Mm, satisfying. Yes, it's very satisfying. <laughs> very cool. So, all right, so I want you to imagine that, uh, that the world, we have the world's attention. Okay. We've been wanting the world's attention. We have a chance. Everybody in the world is looking at us and they're like saying, okay, what? What does the world need to know? about air hockey? The world needs to know that it's a place where you can have these peak experiences like any other sport or super high level activity. Like I was talking about the flow state. Right. These are these very unique human experiences that are very difficult to find. And we right. have something here where you can have these experiences. Right. That creates these experiences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why all the you know, people playing in the room behind us right now are here. Every Why people come from all across the country to play this game, even though right now you can't make money doing it. Right, right. It's because they love it. There's something about the experience that's just enthralling. Right. Mm, mm. And so that's what the world I needs want to, the know, world to know. To know that that, that exists. That yes, that You that can exists, get that experience. That you can get that, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That yeah. it's a... Thing. It's a game where magic happens. That's what I want the world to know. <laughs> that's a good, yeah. that's an, uh, a new slogan for yeah. the USA. A game where magic happens. Very cool. Um, <coughs> okay. What's your best shot? My best shot is probably my right wall under, but I think it might be my, I, my cut shot. My cut shot's my best shot. Okay, your cut shot's your cut best shot. shot. My best shot. Okay. It's my. It's the shot I always know I can go to and execute correctly. Oh. Okay. Um, so no fear that you're gonna knock it off no the table. Fear, no, yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. And how are you doing the cut? What? What? How do you? I. Basically, I'm trying to make the cut look as much like a right wall under as possible. Right. So I really snap my wrist at it and follow through all the way. And I like to bring my arm all the way across. Sure. Follow through to the other. Right. So it oh, really rail. seems like, yeah. yeah. Okay, right yeah. well under. Like I almost just lead them towards the rail with my arm. Right, right. Okay, so now the universe is going to gift you a shot mm -hmm. at championship caliber level yeah. that you don't currently possess. What what shot? Right wall over. Right wall what? Over. Right wall, right wall over. over. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So say something about that. Right wall over, it's a really, in my opinion, it's such a hard shot to perfect. And I don't know if that's because I grew up just learning the right We're wall under, under. Yeah. but it's so difficult for me to hit a right wall over of 
medium to medium fast speed. Right. Uh, with consistency. Sure. And I mean, I see a lot of players have a lot of success with that shot. I mean, there's some yeah. players you can just roll over and lose an over. Yeah. Um, and I also think if I had a good right wall over, I'd probably just never lose. Yeah, it's it, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. If, yeah, if you have to guess between the under and over, and that's you know Pedro right. Otero's uh, attack right. yeah. it was it's, so difficult to right. defend. Right, and, it's, it's, and really you only need two great shots to win. Right. But if you can have that third, yeah, shot that looks exactly like your other two shots. Yeah. Then, I mean, what, what, what are they do? going to do? Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh huh. So. Um, what are your, uh, I mean, what's, what's your goal in air hockey? You know, you're, you're, you're flirting with the, yeah. the upper echelons now, and, and well, you know, what, what is it you want to that's, that's accomplish? That's a good question, because I don't, you know, for me it's always been interesting, because I've always compared myself to you in air hockey naturally, and it's like, am I going to go out meaning to win 11 championships? It's yeah. not, okay. it's not a, um, it just doesn't seem like a very tenable goal. Right, um, but but I'm curious about that because you say you compare yourself to me. I mean, I understand you know um, growing up and, and you know and, and looking up to a father, right? Yeah. But I mean, is it realistic, right, to try to you know? Is there there's no competition? Here. Right. No. Right. 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 So it's just not. Where does that come from? I mean, I think that's a natural thing that sons look up to their fathers and want to carry on their legacy. Okay. Okay. Um, and if you're doing like the same thing that they're doing, right? There's, I at least for me, you want to carry it forward, but even more so. Okay. Right. Um, Interesting. You know, if your dad's a doctor, maybe you want to be a yeah. doctor. Maybe your dad worked at a hospital. Right. Right. Well, maybe you want to have a private practice as a doctor. Sure. You know. But what I'm, what I'm, I guess, getting at is. That's admirable to want to follow in a legacy, right? And, and carry it on. But it, I wonder about, like, it seems like there's some pressure there right, that's yeah. internally derived. Yeah. yeah. It, okay. Yeah. I mean, it, I'd say that definitely exists. Okay. I mean, all right. So you don't feel, oh, well, I'm going to put words into your mouth. Do you feel that I kind of said, you know, come on, son, you no, better. Okay. No, I think, I mean, at least my perception is you've always been proud of me for how I play and for yes. my success. Yeah. You know? I mean, I see you watching Sarah yeah. with as much intent and Noah, or sure. my other two siblings, with as much intent as me, and they're, at least right now, nowhere near my right. level. Right, right. So obviously, right. you're not concerned with them winning Great. world championships. Sure. You just want them to play their best. It's like you used to tell me with grades. You know, I don't care if you get straight A's. I just right. want you to do your best. Fair enough. Okay. Um, and so logically, I know that. Um, but emotionally. Emotionally, yeah, I yeah. don't know that. Okay, yeah. fair yeah. enough. Um, but so I guess because of that, right, my, my goal, I've kind of made peace with my goal not being to win a massive number of world championships. Um, my goal really is to find that flow state and enjoy air hockey. Enjoy okay. the, battles the battle and the right. intensity. Sure. Um, that being said, I would like to win at least four world championships okay. because I feel like that would submit me in the top ten air okay. hockey players of all time. Gotcha. Okay. Almost, like, yeah, that, that, that four right. mark we'll sort of like, yeah. Billy Stubbs and right. uh, Bob Dubasson. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I do, um, I, I, I am very proud of how you play air hockey and uh, how you present yourself, how you carry yourself, uh, the honor in which you play, play the sport. Um, you know, when there was a recent tournament and we were talking about the chart and, you know, what you might want to do is just throw your first match because your, your route through the loser's bracket would be a cakewalk. And you weren't interested, right? You yeah. just weren't interested, and uh, and I thought that was very telling, um, and it, it made me very proud of you, and, and, I, and I like that, and I hope that you continue that, and I certainly hope that you you reach your goals in air hockey, uh, yeah, four, five, however, you know, um, but it's true. I, I mainly care that you just you know play to your you know what you want, you know play play. 
battle, don't give up, and let the chips fall where they may. You know, yeah. and that's the thing. That that's if I had something to say to air hockey players specifically, I guess is the wider life thing is. That's probably the biggest lesson air hockey has taught me is not to give up. Never give up. Yeah. I've come back down 6-1 to win games before, 6-2. Yeah, sure. I, and it kind of it happens kind of with surprising regularity. If right. you just don't give up. Yes. That you will win or if you don't win, make an amazing game. Right. And create amazing experience. Sure, absolutely. And, and I think you're right. I mean, it, one thing I've always thought is if you have ever had a comeback, you have all the evidence you need to know that it's possible. Yes. Therefore, why and, give up? And that makes me think of the question you asked me about what I, what air, how air hockey has changed me. Okay. I think that's maybe actually the biggest way it's changed me, is that it's made me realize that I can overcome most anything. Right. That if I just stick with it, if I do the things I'm supposed to do, Right. I'll be able to get to where I want to go or, you know, have a reasonable shot. Sure. Yeah, you yeah. give yourself a chance yeah, at least, exactly. right? Rather than yeah. just shutting it down and yeah. packing up and going home, which yeah. a lot of people do. A lot of competitors yeah. do that. Um, I had a conversation with with Phil Arnold and, you know, and he, he likes to talk about how air hockey is revelatory, that it reveals to you who you are inside. Yeah. And uh, for a lot of people, they don't like what they see, and so they, they close up, you know, and, and, and move on. Um, and so if you if you play and you, it's revealed to you that you're a person that doesn't give up, that you're a person with grit and determination, it's probably a good thing to know, right? And, and you probably like that about yourself, and yeah. so you want to continue. So, all right, well, have a great tournament and, you know, win it. And, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to ask me who I think the best player is of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to ask that, but um, you know, because I, you know, I, you know, it seems self-serving because uh, I know what your answer is. But sure, I'll ask it. Um, who is or was the greatest of all time? Okay, the greatest of all time is Tim Weissman. <laughs> okay, and I'll say simply why. Okay, won every tournament within five-year span every national every state tournament it was the most dominant air hockey player by far and revolutionized our sport more than anyone else has if you look at anyone playing today basically they're using things that you invented okay um so yeah that's my answer. well i appreciate it and, and, and it's the proper answer for us <laughs> <son>, right <laughs> but uh, uh, uh but i will give you my answer and this is a genuine answer um and, uh, you know, it is what it is. I think Danny, from my perspective, and my reason is, is because the longevity. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have been able to be yeah. dominant and still winning tournaments yeah. for 12 years, and you I, know. Yeah. And I will say I do, I do admire Danny's, um, what he's done to keep going with the sport. Yeah. I mean, when all the cartilage in his finger wore away, right, right. he just drilled still a hole in his mouth and stuck his <laughs> finger in there. Yeah. And then I think won more world championships yes. like that. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of insane. Yeah, it is, is, yeah. It is, is absolutely amazing, yeah. um, the, the, um, yeah. the resilience. Yeah. Yes, and I'll say that of the currently the best player is Colin. Right. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, I will admit, I think Danny is very close to you. Fair enough. In the race. All right. Have a good tournament.